Hello friends, this is Adam with Movie Guy 365 and today I'm going to review the live action remake of Disney's Aladdin. If you're new to the channel, please hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and put out videos every single day. You can also find me over Twitter and Instagram at MovieGuy365. Okay, Aladdin, the live action version of the Disney animated classic. Uh, I first want to start off by saying that the animated version of Aladdin is still my favorite of all of Disney's animated films. I absolutely, like, this was the film that got me back into Disney. Uh, I actually grew up in Southern California, so I was right next to Disneyland, uh, uh, relatively close, so my family went there quite a bit. And of course, being you know young, I was into the Disney shows and, and, the, and the animated films and that kind of thing. But as you get older, you kind of get out of it. And then when I moved to Pennsylvania, I was at that point pretty much out of Disney, and then I came across a double feature of Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin, and I fell right back in love with Disney. And to this day, Aladdin is still, I think, one of my almost a near-perfect movie. It's, it's got great music, it's great adventure, funny as hell. I mean, Robin Williams is iconic in the role, and, you know, Jasmine was just still one of my animated crushes, and I just, it's, uh, it always just is a near and dear film to me. So I was very nervous and apprehensive to hear that they were going to be making a live action version. But here are my thoughts on the live action version. Uh, I feel overall it is a above average movie. It is actually done very, very well. I think Will Smith brings a good energy as the genie, but, and, and, but there's still a couple problems with the movie itself. Uh, for one thing, let me talk about the pros of things I did enjoy. I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to just touch on a few mild spoilers. I'm really gonna try to avoid, you know, spoiling everything, but there are a few things I do want to talk about, but I will do my best to avoid. So if you don't want any spoilers, just come back when you see the movie, but I, I, I'm just gonna sprinkle a few here and there. Uh, some of the pros I really enjoyed was, I think the cast overall was very, very well done. They, they, brought, they brought a very good energy, everybody from Will Smith to just, you know, the, the, the smaller roles that are, populate the screen. It is pretty much confined to, you know, your core there, you know, Jasmine, Jafar, you know, Aladdin, and, you know, a couple in the Sultan, and, and, the, and, the, and of course the Handmaiden, but the, it very rarely branches out beyond that, so they can kind of make it tighter you know, ensemble cast that way. But there are, uh, you know, there are, uh, you know, supporting roles that, you know, get a few minutes of screen time here and there. But I feel everybody did bring a good, good energy to it. Um, there's, there's, a, there's kind of a major con I have with the film, but there's part of that I'm going to refer to as a positive. So I know that's very vague. But, so remember in, at the end of the animated film, they have that whole scene, you know, Jafar has got, you know, all the power, he's, he's, he's the greatest sorcerer, and then Aladdin kind of, you know, tricks him into, you know, becoming a genie. That pretty much same scene happens here, but something happens earlier in the film that gives that a greater depth and meaning, and I actually really enjoyed that. I thought it was a great use of it, a good callback to earlier in the film. It made sense in the, uh, the story, but, you know, you know, there are a lot of issues I have with Jafar, so let me just put that out there. Um, and it has a very good flow. I think the musicals, the musical aspects for the most part, I'd say 99% work. Uh, there's one I'm going to bring up in my negative that I feel just was kind of just didn't belong there. And it really broke the momentum of the movie, and that's like a reprise from an earlier song. Uh, all right, so I did enjoy, you know, those are the things I did enjoy. I think when it comes out of 4K, it's gonna have an amazing color palette. I think that's one of the standouts. Everything from costuming, special effects. This, if you have a, a, a good home theater system or if you go see this in a Dolby Cinema or something like that, the color is just gonna blow your mind. It looks very, very good. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the musical music uh, choices worked fairly well. I think that they don't really compare necessarily to the original, but you know, we can sit there and make, you know, comparisons all day and night, but I just want to really kind of judge this on its own merit. Now I'm going to start listing some cons and it, it may sound like I didn't like the movie because it feels like I have a lot of cons, but really it, it comes down to two main things, but I'm going to touch on, on what I, I didn't feel worked for me. Uh, one Jafar. 
Jafar in the animated feature has much more of a backstory, believe it or not, than in this one. In this one, he's just kind of there. They don't really go into the detail. In fact, they jump that whole initial, you know, setup in the first, in the animated movie, and you're kind of right at him, you know, already looking for the Cave of Wonders, that kind of thing, you know, but they don't really explain it very well. It's just like, oh, he's there. Uh, in, the, in the animated one, it's like you get, you get more of a backstory. Uh, I don't feel Jafar was a strong villain at all. In fact, it, it was just kind of, you know, he didn't really come into his own until the end, and I even felt that was a pale comparison to the uh, the, the animated. Also, this is a Guy Ritchie film. Uh, you would never know it. it. Honestly, you would never know Guy Ritchie directed this movie, and that's kind of a shame because, you know, like it or not, you look at the live-action Dumbo, which came out last month, that has Tim Burton's fingerprints all over that film. This one, I, you know, I've seen all of his movies, and I really was struggling to look for some kind of real signature or something to tell me that this guy, you know, direct, guy directed, guy Richie directed it. I just couldn't find it. It was just, it was just odd. Like it, it, anybody could have almost directed this. And if you're gonna hire a director like Guy Ritchie with with such a unique flavor of directing, you might want to like let him do that. So I'm pretty sure there's an interesting story there. Uh, <laughs> All right, now, one of the issues I have with the songs, so the climax, you know, once again, this is from directly from the animated film, so this is not really spoiling anything. When, you know, Jafar wishes to become Sultan, and he gets his wish, which also is kind of an issue, but, you know, this could be a 30-minute video just talking about that, uh, Jafar shortcomings. But, you know, when, when, that, when that becomes, an, when, when we get to that point, and he orders Jaf and he orders Jasmine taken away by guards. All of a sudden, she breaks into a reprise of a song. It just completely grinded the movie to a halt. Everything was just it just took you out so bad. I didn't you know I didn't mind that version of the song earlier when we saw it, and I understand what they were going for. But when you got like a fast moving train and then you just stop it like abruptly people are going to notice and I don't think the song needed to be there I think the point was made earlier in the film and it, it almost just kind of felt like oh we have to take a moment out because and I didn't like it I think the climax overall just suffered from it and it just just didn't need to be there especially since it was already you know from earlier um the CDGI uh, I'm sorry the genie CGI was okay. I didn't feel it was particularly great when he was as the blue form, unfortunately. But I did enjoy the special effects that the genie created, and of course the little the the smoke effect when he's coming out of the lamp. I thought that was really really neat. But when they really focused in on Will Smith as the genie, it really didn't look great. It actually just it it looked bad in, in a lot of spots. But overall, I I feel that Will Smith himself was a very positive. You know, genie in this. I I enjoyed actually. I should probably list this as a pro that he was well integrated into the story more so than Robin Williams genie was in the animated feature. I, he he had a lot to do. He was he was you know he he was kind of like the conscious that that Aladdin needed at at a certain point in the film. I liked him in this. I I think he really was good. Even if some of the jokes didn't quite work for me, I think overall that you know he was a, a very good genie, and I appreciated seeing him in the film. Um, let's see. Uh, as I said, sometimes, uh, and I guess my last real complaint is sometimes if. It felt more like we were watching a stage production. And I don't mean that in necessarily in a bad way, but you're in a, in a giant place called Agrabah, and it felt very contained a lot of the time. A lot of it was indoor, more so the back half than the first half, but it just, I would have liked to have seen more of an epic grandness of Agrabah. I wanted to see every, but even the outdoor scenes felt a little bit like, oh, this is a stage lot. This, it didn't have like a natural life to it. Um, but that's just kind of a minor nitpick, and maybe if the film does well and they, and they do a sequel, maybe they can really expand on that. Overall, I really did enjoy Aladdin, the live action. I don't think it's going to replace the, the animated as it should, it's just stand on its own. I enjoyed it for a lot of different things. Uh, I had the major two complaints were Jafar and that abrupt song towards the end of the climax. But, and also, anybody expecting a giant snake, you're probably not going to be happy about it. But I kind of know the reason why, you know, since we had a giant snake in Guy Ritchie's last film, they had to do something different. And I was okay with it, 
but I would have liked to have seen the giant snake. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I, I did enjoy it. So I'm going to give Aladdin a 7.5 out of 10. I think it works really, really well. I may even go in for a 3D viewing. I saw this one in Dolby Cinema. I really enjoyed it. But I think maybe a 3D viewing would be in order. So I'm going to go check that out over the weekend. So let me know in the comments below if you plan on checking out Aladdin. And in the meantime, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. I put out videos every single day. So until next time, this is Adam with Movie Guy 365. I will see you at the movies.